For more information about getting your adjuster licenses, go to adjustertv.com slash adjusterpro. In this video, I'm gonna show you the very first five adjuster licenses you need to get and why, starting now. This is Adjuster TV. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV. And for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. Click on the bell notification so that you never miss a video. Wanna know how to survive your first ever storm deployment? Check out the How to Survive Your First Storm Deployment webinar. Register for free at adjustertv.com slash thrive. And thanks to Brad, who sent me an email asking, would you consider doing a segment that might feature all of the various conferences adjusters could attend and possibly go ahead and begin planning slash registering for for 2020? Heck yes. So let me just start by saying that there are a ton of conferences that happen every single year. Many IA firms hold the conference, including Mid-America Cat, Paysetter Claims, and All Cat. There are adjuster and industry groups that hold conferences or conventions like NACA or PLRB. There are trade show type events like InsureTech Connect. There are even user conferences like the Ver Verisk, I don't even know how to say that, like the Verisk Elevate Conference, which is basically the Exactware User Conference. There's even a conference for crop and agriculture adjusters. So many. I would tell you that you should go to all of them if possible, but doing that can get super expensive. If you could only pick one, I would tell you to go to NACA. Why? Because many of the folks who also have their own conferences will also be at NACA. Exactware is gonna be at NACA, Paysetter is gonna be there, Mid-America Cat will be there, and so on and so forth. Also, as far as I know, only NACA has several days devoted solely to letting you interview with well over 60 IA firms face to face. That's huge. And if you're just getting started, this is by far gonna be the best bang for your buck. There are literally dozens of conventions and conferences out there. Too many for me to truly be able to list them all without certainly missing a ton of them. So let's do this. If you or your organization runs an annual conference that is associated with insurance claims, and you believe that independent property and auto adjusters could benefit from attending, send me an email at matthew at adjustertv.com and put event news in the subject line. I'll be sure to announce your conference in an upcoming video. Okay, if you wanna run claims as a, does this lighting kinda of look like, kinda of looks like, like a sitcom, like Friends or something, doesn't it? Like, you know, this is like Central Perk. I'm looking at my monitor up there, so. It's kind of flat lighting. It's not really anything interesting going on, but I don't really have, seem to have any wrinkles anymore. If you wanna run claims as a catastrophe adjuster, whether you're doing auto or property, you must be licensed, period. IA firms won't be that interested in you until you've got at the very minimum your home state or DHS license. In this video, I'm gonna tell you the first five licenses I would get after I got my home state or designated home state license if I was starting over and why. And I'll just start off with list by Ninja, I'll just list them. So Texas, Indiana, Florida, Minnesota, and Oklahoma. After I obtained these, those first five licenses, I would absolutely get started on my New York license and then my licenses in the Southeast and licenses in the Northwest. Okay, so why am I gonna start with these first Midwestern licenses? If you look at a map, and we're gonna jump into the super sweet reciprocity map at adjusterpro.com to do this, you will see that most of the states in the upper Midwest do not require licenses. Colorado, no license. Even Illinois, with its massive suburban sprawl in Chicago, no license. As cat adjusters, we're going to be doing mostly hail damage, followed by wind, then water, then maybe an occasional hurricane, which of course is both wind and water, uh, or wildfire. The vast majority of the claims that you're gonna handle as an IA if you take cat assignments is gonna be hail, by far. So you're gonna to wanna to focus your attention on getting licensed in the places where you're most likely to work. The area with the most frequent damaging hailstorms is between Ohio and Colorado and the Canadian border and Mexico. And the states that you will be working the most in are Texas, Colorado, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, Minnesota, Wisconsin, North and South Dakota, Indiana, Nebraska, and Iowa. Most of those states do not have an adjuster licensing requirement, which means you can work there even without a license. But again, getting work at all at an IA firm will pretty much require that you have at least your home state or DHS license. I can't stress this enough. So that's where we're gonna concentrate our efforts in getting licenses. However, because hurricanes are a very real threat, you want to also at least pick up Florida. And then you'll add New York as your very next one because even though New York is a big, beautiful pain of a state to work in, IA firms and carriers are desperate for adjusters licensed to work there. It's not a joke, or me just making it up. 
Eye firms have told me explicitly they will give preferential treatment to IAs who have the fabled golden ticket New York license. And it's not because working there is so great, it's that it's such a scarce license that having it gives you a distinct advantage over other newbies when you're working your way up a roster, or even other experienced adjusters for that matter. And let me just say this, as a professional independent claims adjuster, you're going to want to get as many licenses as you possibly can so that you can maximize your usefulness to IA firms and their carrier clients. When you make yourself indispensable like this, you will stay busier than you want to be. Even what is considered to be a slow year by other average adjusters. You will be so busy, you will be turning down work. But you've got to start getting these licenses in a way that makes sense, okay? So to recap, get your home state or DHS license by going to adjustertv.com slash adjusterpro. Pick up the first five licenses, which is Texas, Florida, Oklahoma, Minnesota, and Indiana. Get to work on a New York license, and then start filling in the Southeast coastal states, the Northeast states, including Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, and the Northwestern states of Washington and Oregon. After that, I mean, fill in as needed with Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Nevada, New Mexico, Arizona, California, Michigan, etc. I would leave states like Alaska and Hawaii until the very last, as you likely won't be working at either of those places often, if ever. Also, be sure to get your passport if you haven't already, because you can get work in Canada and they get some big hail in Alberta and Saskatchewan, not to mention just as much wind and ice storm stuff as we do down here, okay? Question of the day. Did you know that you could also work in US territories like Puerto Rico? Make sure that getting your passport is a priority. If for nothing else, you'll be able to go sit on the beach in Mexico or Costa Rica in the off season. For much more information about crushing it as an independent adjuster, head on over to adjustertv.com. And if you got value from this video, you can help me create more videos just like this by subscribing to Adjuster TV on YouTube. Wondering what to watch next? There are tons more videos right here on the Adjuster TV YouTube channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.